Welcome friends, welcome back to the channel. It's doing a different video today from my usual content. We're doing a first impressions video. I haven't really done uh, these videos before, so I'm excited to share this with you today. And what better one to start with than Star Wars Outlaws. This has been and will be my most anticipated game this year, as I'm a massive Star Wars nerd. I have been a massive nerd for Star Wars my entire life. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to have another Star Wars game out there. Before we get started though, uh, just have a quick favor to ask of you all. If you're actually liking anything we are doing on the channel, please consider subscribing, as subscribing does help the channel grow more than you know. Also liking and sharing the content gets it out there and helps the algorithm as well. Enough said, this is the IGN final preview. This is going to be the gameplay we're going to be all enjoying from the 30th of August. Let's do this. Let's go. Really excited for this, guys. I have enough friends. Yeah, but you don't have to pay me to hang out with you. It seems impossible that Star Wars Outlaws is the first ever open world Star Wars game, but indeed it's true. With that first comes plenty of expectation, but also lots of excitement, particularly when the studio handling the effort is massive entertainment, the talented developers of The Division. Speaking personally, I confess that I don't often get hyped up for too many open world games these days, outside of those made by Rockstar, as those can be counted on to raise the bar every single time, but I have been plenty hyped for Outlaws. After all, it's set after The Empire Strikes Back, you play as a Han Solo caliber scoundrel instead of yet another Jedi, and you've got an awesome alien creature pet named Nyx by your side at all times, who promises to have an impact on gameplay and not just follow our hero K Vess around being adorable. In other words, it's got a lot going for it on paper. <sighs> Don't worry, Nix. The uh, next job will be better. And while it doesn't seem like Outlaws will do any Rockstar-like bar raising, after playing a near final build of it for four hours across two different sections of gameplay, I can say it's still one of my most anticipated games yet to come out in a busy second half of 2024, and it feels very Star Wars in all the right ways. Very important point he just mentioned there. This is not a typical um, Ubisoft game. Now, Ubisoft are renowned for their very big open world type games. This is made by massive entertainment. We do have to always remember going forward with this game that it's made by the same guys that did The Division. Now, The Division 1 and 2 are phenomenal games. I've played them both very heavily in the past. So I'm really excited to see what they do. If this is... Similar to that type of gameplay with the component of a massive Star Wars RPG open world, then I think we're going to have a good game of the year contender. I might be a bit early in saying that, but for me, at least, this is going to be a very big game we play on the channel. Let's go. Let's carry on. <sighs> we made it. <laughs> Ubisoft has developed a reputation for making checklist open world games. Big spaces where you're given a to-do list of side quests and activities to complete outside of the golden path. Generally, this is not a compliment. But one of the things that impressed wow. me about Star Wars Outlaws is that I didn't get the sense that I was just checking boxes to inch closer to 100% game completion. Don't get me wrong, there is plenty to do in Outlaws, but those side quests and activities feel a lot more organic than they do in the publisher's other games. For example, nice. while wandering around the town of Miragana on the planet Toshara, I walked by an arcade minigame of sorts. I wandered cool. up and played around and had a good time. I also stumbled upon a betting stand where I could wager on holographic horse races. I managed to bet on the right one by sheer good luck, which gave me a chuckle later when I discovered a data pad lying around elsewhere that gave me a strong hint on who to lay my money on. I also encountered a down-on-their-luck gambling addict who begged me for money. I obliged, enabling his vice and leaving with a promise that he'd share in his winnings should he find himself back on Lady Luck's good side. Naturally, there's also a cantina, and I even saw a sabak table, but I lacked sufficient funds at the time to buy in and play. Someone told me that the huts are scrambling to get back something of Jabba's. 
All of these optional activities feel very natural on the planets and towns of Outlaws, and that's true in part because of the excellent art direction that makes every location ooze Those Star fighters. Wars authenticity. From the lighting, to the architecture, to the NPCs milling about, Massive has, based on what I've seen so far, done an excellent job of setting an authentic Star Wars stage. <laughs> And I'd be remiss if I didn't add how the story of Star Wars Outlaws only supports and reinforces all of this. Kay is just out to make her way in an unforgiving galaxy, lying or double-crossing as she needs to in order to look out for number one. This plays out in occasional dialogue choices that pop up during cutscenes, adding a bit more player agency to what would otherwise be a mini Star Wars in-game movie. Will those choices affect how the plot ultimately plays out? I wouldn't bet on it, but there is a laudable faction reputation system that tracks how much, or little, each of the in-game syndicates likes you. Wow. Double cross the huts and you'll harm your reputation with them, but increase your standing with the Crimson Dawn. Piss off a faction enough and they won't let you into their territory, meaning you'll have to sneak in and stay undetected if you want access. What if I say no? Now that you know who I work for, I can't let you walk out of here. But you're probably wondering, what of the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay? In this, Star Wars Outlaws made me happy. This is a stealth game if you want it to be. And if you mess up in that attempt, I honestly like that you don't have a lightsaber to save you. You'll have to use Kay's blaster, which yes, is upgradable, to get out of trouble, and that adds to the sense of danger because you're not a laser sword wielding demigod. As such, the blaster battles felt like they had meaningful stakes, and the stealth gameplay had a bit of weight to it because I knew that I'd be up against it if I messed up. Calling for reinforcements. Roger that. Naturally, with stealth comes lockpicking, and it's here too in the form of data spikes, and I quite like how Outlaws handles it. Each lock has a particular audio signature, and it's up to you to match wow. that okay, pattern cool. by pressing the right trigger in time with the beeps. The longer you take, the more likely you are to be spotted. Similarly, the hacking minigame is also really fun. Here, you'll need to line up the right symbols in the right order, which usually takes multiple attempts. Fail too often and you'll fail the hack entirely. It took me a few tries to wrap my head around, but once I did, I really enjoyed the opportunities I got to do some hacking. Nice. The core stealth gameplay is aided by the breakout star of Outlaws, Nyx. Yeah. Yes, Nyx is the BD-1 of this game, but compared cool, to cool. Cal Kestis' so droid cute. companion, Kay's organic pal can do a whole lot more for you. He can distract an enemy by getting the bad guy's attention and adorably playing dead, or flat out attack them. He can hit buttons or switches too, or set off bombs, and retrieve items. This is useful when you're pinned down in a firefight and a more potent A300 blaster rifle is across the room. Nyx can go fetch it and bring it back and drop it at your feet without you leaving cover. I even like how Outlaws handles these larger weapons. They can't be reloaded, meaning that once you fire all the rounds, you just drop the empty gun and go back to your nice. trusty blasters. This is likely a design decision to ensure that Kay never feels too overpowered, thus making sure the player is always on their toes in combat. Out here you live and die by your reputation. Finally, you can't have an open world Star Wars game without ways to get around that expanse, and in Outlaws, Kay has a speeder bike that, as you'd guess, can also be upgraded. You can win credits doing races, or just stop off along the way to your destination at some interesting looking pit stop. The bike controls well. It almost feels like driving a boat in Wave Race 64 in that it's pretty fast and arcadey nice, and maneuverable, looks amazing, the bike. but hardly handles like it's on rails. So cool riding Complimenting the bike. Complimenting this is Kay's ship, the Trailblazer, and yes, it's upgradable. I got to do a bit of outer space ship-to-ship -ship combat, and I had a good time. I'll need plenty more time in the pilot seat to really solidify my opinion here, but flying the Trailblazer made a good first impression. Oh, that's it. We've lost them. 
If there's one thing that concerned me a bit during my hands-on time, it's bugs. Outlaws went gold well before the preview event, meaning that if I wasn't playing the certification build, it was something mighty close. And while yes, there will inevitably be a day one patch, as most games have nowadays, it was still disappointing to see as many annoying little, admittedly mostly visual and harmless, glitches as I did. Hopefully that day one update will knock out the bulk of them. You know the rules. No credits, no sabak. And you already owe the pikes a fortune. Ultimately though, I had a fantastic time wow. with Star Wars Outlaws. Open world games tend to be jacks of all trades, masters of none, and while I'm not sure Outlaws will master any of its gameplay components, it nonetheless not only does them all very well, but it does so with a convincing Star Wars sheen. And since there's somehow never been an open world Star Wars game before, it feels new, fresh, and most welcome. I'm glad this is arguably the first big name game out this far fall on August 30th, because I can't wait to play more of it. How do you know my name? I keep an eye out for new talent. For more on Star Wars Outlaws, don't miss our exclusive 10 minutes of gameplay, as well as our behind the scenes look at how Nyx was created. And for everything else in the worlds of Star Wars and video games, and Star Wars video games, stick with IGN. Wow, so, it's happening. So yeah, pretty much I'm going to be um, playing this on the channel from release. I will have early access because I am part of Ubisoft Connect. Now I will leave the link to Ubisoft Connect below. Doesn't matter how you feel about it. It's um, it's one of those options where you pay a small amount of money and you do have a full access to their catalogue. Um, a lot of people do shit on it. A lot of people shit on Ubisoft. I, I understand. Look, it's, it's each of their own. For me, it's convenient. Um, I like to play a lot of uh, Ubisoft games anyway. Um, I like their formula. I think this is going to be phenomenal. It's in Sin Star Wars, which is absolutely incredible. As I said, been a massive Star Wars nerd my entire life. Um, so to have a Star Wars game that is not based around Jedi's uh, incredible. It gives me the feel of... Uh, Star Wars The Old Republic, which is the MMO, SOTOR, uh, as you get to create your own character in that. But um, yeah, this is going to be awesome to play from the 27th I'll be playing. So it's released on the 30th. I have three days early access. Um, we'll be playing every piece of this game, bugs and all. It'll be episode by episode. It'll be a mainstay on the channel. Stay with us, enjoy the game as we play it, and yeah, thank you for spending some time. This is my first live reaction. I hope uh, you've enjoyed it as much as I have showing it to you, and I look forward to seeing you again. Peace. Have a good one, guys. Thank you.